Hello everybody and welcome to Resonance Arcade episode 71. My name is Chris and today I'm joined by my co-host Matt, but not Danny. Danny Ooh. has decided to take a little bit of time out so he can actually play some games for once. We'll see how that works out for yeah. him. Yeah, well no, that's actually a lie. He's got some work bollocks he said he has to get on with, but you know. <sighs> Hopefully it'll give him some time to actually play some games and come back with some opinions on things, form, form something in the future. Uh, yeah. So let him and, contribute. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we were supposed to have a guest today as well, but unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get the uh, the old internet connection was playing up, and we couldn't get the mics working, and then he could hear us, and then he couldn't hear us, and it's unfortunate because it was one of the previous hosts of uh, Resonant Car Arcade, Sam, um, who uh, previous listeners or listeners who heard to the last incarnation will know he's very opinionated and uh, very very geeky about the games that he does play. He really gets into them, so. Uh, I was looking forward to that. Yep, it's unfortunate, but uh, we're going to soldier on anyway for the benefit of everybody listening. So, in our flash, 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 flashback section, we'll be just... Put your teeth in, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in one of those days today, Chris. In our flashback section, we'll be discussing 11-Bit Studios' 2018 colony game Frostpunk, the 2D indie Metroidvania game Hollow Knight, and that's it we were supposed to have another game but sam has unfortunately met his technological demise yes we were supposed to be talking about from software's sekiro shadows die twice but unfortunately as i said sam's not uh, coming to join us we might even have a little bit of opinion on it i don't know i don't think either of us have played it I, i've seen enough gameplay and i do like from soft games so I'd, we can have a little chat about it yeah yeah maybe we will yeah maybe we will um so we'll also be revisiting and speculating on the, well, we won't be speculating on the Outer Worlds either because that was one of Sam's games too, but we have talked about that previously anyway. Since then, because Sam said he was going to talk about it, I've done a little bit of reading, a bit more looking at uh, re previews because the, the, it's out in preview at the moment and I'm very, very excited about it now. It's, it's up there on my to get list, absolutely. Um, we're also going to be talking about 2018's God of War reimagining in a bit more detail than we have previously we've mentioned that as well and we're going to discuss uh hoppo or hopu hopu we'll go with hopu hopu yeah hopu games is risk of rain 2 uh, before that comes out of early access lovely lastly in hardware hot pants we'll be speculating about a new microsoft patent and some amd nvidia killer rumors and before we get going it's time for what are you selling what are you buying this week, it's my go, um, and we're restarting. So we're starting from scratch. Nobody's got any points. And obviously, Matt is here, but Danny is not here to, to allocate points. We'll get Danny to give us points at a later date. Um, this week, I have two minutes to sell a game to Matt. And uh, this week, I'm just going to go for it. I'll get the timer up. Let's go with it. Yeah. And we'll go. Right, I've got two minutes to sell you a game. My game is Ultimate Chicken Horse. I've talked about it previously. Um, it is a competitive 2D platformer game, very similar to like a Mario type game, but it's competitive in that it's it can only really be played multiplayer. You can play some solo challenge games, the, the download levels, etc., on your own if you want, but that's only for the sadomasochistic Um It will make you hate your friends because everybody I play, until they really get the game, just block, they block the exit to the level and it's impossible to complete the level. Uh, not just that, somebody, and it's usually me in my group of friends, is particularly good at it and they will absolutely trounce you and they put, they put the traps in just the wrong place. And they do. Anyway, so basically it's, uh, it's, it's multiplayer. It's got an insane amount of configuration in it as well. You can... Uh, you can customize the level in lots of different ways. Round timers can change. You can set um, lots of different fail conditions. For example, lava will come up after 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes. Um, you can set uh, meteors to come down after a certain amount of time that you have to dodge. You can set double jumping. You can set the gravity mode. You can set the jump height. Uh, tons and tons of, of settings. So basically the default game is a party mode. You've got a creative mode as well. And uh, what's the third type? There's another type of mode, I can't remember off the top of my head, challenge mode, that's it, and that's the one that where you can you can do lots of things. I've got 30 seconds left, and I've not got through half of the stuff. It's round-based, so at the beginning of the game, you 
uh, at the beginning of the round, you choose an item to place. You place that item on the screen, and then you have to make it difficult for your friends to get to the end. If they if you they hit one of your traps and you get to the end, you get a point. Uh, you get a trap point, and you get a score point. And if you don't, if they don't get to the end, they um, basically no one gets anything and times up i was staring at the time for too long and i was waffling for stuff i've already told you previously <sighs> it's just well, it's not enough well. time i was i've got a, a whole notepad full of notes about things that i was telling you i got on the second point there i can actually see the reflection on your screen you've got the wikipedia page open in case <laughs> you have to fall back on something yeah oh, anyway so now matt gets uh, three questions to ask me i didn't make that very clear that was the worst sell i've done in my life but i have hopefully told you enough about it before to for you to know enough about it so questions Matt okay so my first question would be can you talk me through a little bit of say say we sat down on the sofa to play the game so how from the word go how do I play the game do I just a little bit about like how the mode starts like when we say the placement and things like that and then into the game okay you sit down on the couch four people get a control pad two or four people uh, you choose a character. I think you start off with like f four, and then the, you unlock loads as the game goes on. The uh, you choose a level, so you jump around on the the lobby screen to find the level you want to go to. There's up to fifteen levels, and once you're in the level, the first thing that happens is this party box pops up if you're on party mode, and you get to choose either a platform, a trap, or any kind of any kind of it's tons of different types of traps like there's um there's icy platforms that make you slide on them there's like gooey platforms that make you stick to them every single thing in the game can be rotated and configured in lots of different ways so you get to kind of build the level and that's the thing i missed telling you i can't keep this isn't this isn't fair i'm getting another chance to sell it to you here um once you've placed once you've placed the item so four people are playing you get four items to place if two people are playing you get four items because you get two each um if three people are playing you only get three it's because of the, you get like double items if you, it's, two, it's only two if you're playing um you place it and then it you, the idea is for you to get to the end of the level the first couple of rounds are usually very easy because there's not much on the map but it very quickly becomes absolute chaos and and it can be you can build some really clever stuff even within the round so you get like 10 rounds to play and then uh at the end of the end of the game it tells you who's won basically based on like a a graph that appears as you score extra points but you can get points for loads of stuff okay so just um, to kind of make something clear, so each round, you you don't start again from scratch. You're adding another piece on top of what you've already added. Yes. So you get okay. ten rounds on a particular level. By the end, when you when you finished, you get the the winner gets awarded, and then you choose another level the next time, and it's a fresh game. Okay. Well, sounds interesting to me. So you're basically so building the level. You build a part of the level, play it, build more another part of the level. Okay, so my second question is, obviously the kind of, the fun in it would be to catch your friends out, but if you're sat on the sofa next to somebody, you can see where they put their traps. So yeah. is is there like an online play mode so you, you can kind of keep it a bit more secret? Yes, but you can still see everybody. You're all on one screen. That's the joy of it. If there's four people, that's the skill of it as well, because if I play it with some of my less less gamery friends or my less observant friends, they won't look at where other people have placed things. And sometimes you miss it as well. So by the time you get to the end of the level, someone's put like a spiky ball behind something that you can't see and you'll hit it and you'll be like, yeah, I nearly did it, you know. And, and that that's half of the fun. It is there's so much joy I get from... I don't necessarily get fun from blocking other people, but I, I the, the thing I enjoy is getting over people's traps and yeah figuring out a new way around the level because you parkour as well you don't just jump you jump off walls and um you don't park you just jump off walls basically so the the movement system's quite simple in that respect yeah up, well left right um oh god i didn't even get into half of the detail honestly there's there's loads of different types of levels as well and 
Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to lie, Chris. I'm throwing you soft questions here just because I'm trying to get more information out of the game. I've really, really <laughs> fluffed it entirely. Fluffed that. That's that pitch. Um. <sighs> so. Yeah, you, you. There's a lot of skill involved in the traversal of the level, but the the final uh, the. There's the skill involved in where you place your traps as well. Depending on which game mode you play or what settings you've got, you might favour placing traps in re in places that are going to get people over, because you might get more points from that, over trying to get to the end of the level. So we play a mode where you get points for completing it, but you get point. You can also get points for being more points for, be, for being second and more points for being third because the traps are more important. You get double the points for scoring trap you know landing a trap in the right place it's very okay. configurable and that's what makes it hard to describe i think here yeah i, I can kind of get the idea that there's a lot you can do with it yes yeah. it sounds kind of almost like you've got a very set idea of what to do but very sandboxy as well absolutely totally and utterly sandbox um it, the very basic principles is like the first level that you start off with is called rooftops and you have if there's four of you playing, four of you might you get, might get four flat platforms, so you can just get to the end of the level. The next round, you might get a rotating blade that you can place right between two of the levels. So when someone jumps, they get hit by the blade, or they can time the jump and do a, like a a, a a wall jump off off it, so they can get over it. But it's all about you can. F it's quite fluid controlling your movement in the in the air as well, so you can. You can kind of dictate where your character is going to be. Very responsive. A lot of skill involved in in the movement as well as the placement. For the listeners who can't see Chris's face, he is intent right now. Hmm. There is a look of evil in his eyes that says he wants to do some harm to people when he plays this game. Uh, it's not that for me. I mean, people think it's because I'm I'm good at placing the traps as well and create and making it. When I when I play the game, for example, there might be. I might place a, a horizontal piece, uh, sorry, a, a vertical piece somewhere that's like four blocks long, you know, like a Tetris block, right? Yeah. It's the longest piece in the game. I might place that somewhere where other people will look at it and go, how the hell do you get over that? It's impossible. But I've also placed like an, a, a bit of ice underneath it so I can do a slide underneath it. Um, uh, then there might be a, another time where, depending on the level you're playing, how the level moves and changes because there's platforms in some levels and there's um there's like lava in some levels that that rises and changes and it's it's everything every level's different and some of the levels i absolutely hate some of them i think are absolutely brilliant there's loads of little like secret passages as well you can go through i've had way more than two minutes describing this to you <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to make up for danny not being here yeah I suppose, not, I suppose. not that he ever does anything anyway no I wouldn't have asked any questions. So you got one more question. So one final question I have is how I know you say that you play with people who aren't necessarily gamers or aren't necessarily that used to playing games and stuff. How approachable would you say it is for somebody who doesn't really play games? Uh, my wife plays games with me. She's not a gamer. She plays she's playing Death Road to Canada right now, in fact. Um, but that's only because she's totally addicted to it right now because we've been playing it together a lot and she wants to get the next character unlocked and she wants to unlock the next zombo points and all that. Um, she loves the game. She's utterly shit at it and she comes last every single time no matter what mode we put it on. If I'm not playing, she's got a bit of a better chance. Um, I'm not trying to say I'm the best gamer in the world, but I'm, there's some games I'm particularly good at and that one I do tend to trounce most of my mates. But there's, there's another guy there that's a fairly competent platform player i think if you play mario and mario maker you'd get after a few rounds you'd give me a good run for my money put it that way but it's accessible absolutely accessible it's very easy to understand it's hard to master okay well i, I do yeah yeah i think i'm kind of getting there now with the with the idea of the game I didn't like the idea when I, f I added it to my wish list on Steam uh, as a co-op game, knowing that I play a lot of co-op with friends. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll leave it. And then I bought it on a whim one day. I thought, I'm bored of everything we're playing. Let's have a go. And we got it. And we just that was all we played for weeks together. And everyone was like, put it on. Put all the chicken horse on. Put it on. It's brilliant. And it is really, it's a really fun with your friends on the couch game. And I want, I'm going to get it played at the LAN party. Absolutely. 
I'm going to get people around my computer if we don't get it on the big screen. In fact, I want to I want to get a competition going with it because it's very very competitive. No, that's rigged. You just want to win some. There is that as well. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So I think the question is, would you buy it? Oh, I have to tell you the prices, don't I? You do. I do. I do. I didn't look the prices up because I'm an idiot. As you know, Chris, I am a stout Yorkshireman. I don't like parting with money. <sighs> I'm going to have to look them up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not That's much. Fine. It's not much. I mean, I do like the phrase, it's not much. That, that does kind of arouse some interest from me. Ultimate Chicken Horse on Steam right now. And the internet's the slowest it's ever been. <laughs> right now, full price is 10.99. Okay. Lowest price it's ever been is probably what I got it at is three pound seventy five. Honestly, for ten ninety nine, the right the only thing for me is I don't get a lot of opportunity to play kind of couch games. That's the one caveat I have. But at the same time, ten ninety nine's not a tremendous amount of money, and it does sound like a lot of fun. So do you know what? Yeah, I'd buy it at full price. Full price, good stuff. Full That's price. a whole one point to me. And let's see what Danny says because I know Danny likes his co-op games, but this is a competitive game. It's competitive, but it's competitive in that fun way of it's people you're with. That that's always been the differentiation for me. Like if it's somebody I'm next to and I can see how annoyed I've just made them, <laughs> there is that. Yeah, that is what sells it to me. Yeah. Well, what my wife doesn't understand when I like if I do a particularly hard move in a game and we're playing cooperatively, she's like she doesn't understand why I get joy out of beating her. It's not the beating that I get the joy out of. It's the t and not even the t this is a really co bad cop out. It's the taking part in the challenge. It's the fact that I've just done something that was very very difficult to achieve and I've managed it. And and, and I suppose I can get why people like playing the Mario Makers of the world that people do but i don't like it so that just hard for the sake of it my friends have tried to make it impossible for me they're trying to be twats because they know how good i am at it and the fact that i can get over it and get and and do it then i'm like brilliant a lot of the time i don't finish the levels in that game because it's it's extremely difficult when you've got four people placing stuff everywhere that's you've just planned the route out in your head every single round you have to replan your route and replan mm. how are you going to traverse the level and, and that's what makes it fun for me so i do like the idea of the evolving gameplay and i certainly hope that nobody it takes it out of context and cuts out that little bit where you say the reason i like beating my wife <laughs> <laughs> well uh, yeah it is the internet <laughs> luckily we only get about four views on youtube so let's not worry too much about that at the moment well one of our four loyal viewers please cut that out <laughs> and send it to me thank you someone did that to me on my other podcast the other week and it was i did a stupid voice and that just that was it <laughs> Everyone in our community channels started ripping into me. Anyway, so yes, let's move on to our flashback section. This is a section where we talk about games that we have played recently that we have enjoyed. Simple as that. Um, apart from apart from Ultimate Chicken Horse, which I play almost every single week with my friends. Uh, I'm going to let Matt, Matt go first. Talk about his game. Thank you. So the game I've picked this week is Hollow Knight which is a Metroidvania-style game by Team Cherry, released in 2017 or 2018 on the Switch, which is the console I've played it on. So the thing I really like about Hollow Knight is I think it's kind of everything. It's a simple enough game to kind of get into, but it's the sort of thing where the, the skill ceiling is more about you rather than about what you unlock or anything else you get. Sorry, I've just realised I've started talking about the game without actually explaining anything about it. So I know, I was going to ask you in a minute, but I know about um, Shovel Knight. I've got that and I've played that. Hollow Knight, I thought was a follow-up to it, but I had a quick look and it's nothing to do with it at all, is it? No, no, it's um, it's its own game, essentially. It, to kind of give a bit of background on it, it's a, as I said, it's a Metroidvania, so it's a lot of platforming, a lot of combat, but with a lot of emphasis on the timing of things and, you know, distancing yourself correctly and utilizing the um, you have a reasonably limited move set to defeat the enemies but it, it's it's a kind of simple to play difficult to master like you were saying before and yeah i i just enjoy games where there's so much to be done with what you start with and you kind of realize eventually that it's not about 
what gear you get. You, you can't compensate just by getting better gear. You have to get better at the game. Get good. And you, yeah, exactly. Coming back to Dark Souls, you got to get good. If you mm. don't get good, you get gone. And I, I, I do have a bit of appreciation for that kind of game. I haven't seen enough of Hollow Knight to have that much of an opinion on that game. Um, but I know a lot of plat. And it's a two D platformer, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, a lot of 2D platformers are like that. I mean, like, I've played a lot of totally different type of game. I've played a lot of Super Meat Boy. All right, that yeah. is insanely difficult and, and very frustrating, but also kicks you back into the action very quickly. Is it like that in any way, or is it is it a different type of platformer? No, that'd be probably more comparable to Celeste, which I was talking about a couple of weeks right. ago. But it, it's, I think you can play this a little slower and more methodically if you want. And there's a lot of exploration to do, which is something I always appreciated in the Metroidvania style games. There's a lot of little secret areas. And just the, the game's really got a fantastic kind of atmosphere and it's got a fantastic art style and everything about it. It's just... It's one of those rare kind of indie games where I I straight away kind of see the appeal of it. Like a lot of them, they, they feel a little, I don't want to be too general, but they feel a bit like they, they kind of get the cutesy aspect of it or, you know, they, they have kind of their art style that they've gone with, but then they don't have too much to back it up or like the, the novel ideas they have kind of wear out quickly. Yeah, they're, they're this, overdone. They yeah. repeat themselves a bit too much. Yeah, but there's, there's just something quite charming about the game. It, it's... Like it, the, the levels all flow that nicely into each other. You know, the environments flow nicely into each other. It, it, it's got its certain color palette. It, it's almost kind of, it almost makes me think of sort of like a very cartoony Tim Burton kind of world. It's very dark and a little gothic. And like all the characters are inspired by bugs, which is, it, it gives it this really unique art style. In can, can you give me a, a brief overview, like a summary, a synopsis of the story? I don't want to know the end, but I want to know what i'm getting into as if i started playing the game i can give you a very brief in uh overview of it just because i'm not entirely sure of the full story myself okay. it's quite it, it, it's it's a little like i hate using the comparison it's a little like dark souls where you know they only kind of give you so much that they don't really spell it out for you okay but the the idea is that you are the hollow knight you are like a little little bug and you're You've been sent, I believe. Again, I the story is just I don't know. <laughs> All right, fair you, enough. If you, if you, you don't know the story, that's you, you've been you've been basically sent to this world for some reason, and it's very pretty. All that's right. about that's about then, as much as I can summarize. So how much? What what kind of progression elements are in it? Then you said it's it's a Metroidvania, so you will be brick, you know, going through screens of some description upgrading your knight by getting new items is that the that that's right yeah you have these um little token or medallions i forget the exact name for them so they do offer different upgrades and things like that but it, it's all kind of it lets you kind of on the fly change what you want to do so say if you want to go collect money to buy an item you can like on the fly rearrange these tokens to kind of make you find more money okay or, or you can rearrange them like if you're having difficulty with a boss to kind of give you a bit more damage and things like that so it's a nice nice kind of little customization system that doesn't it doesn't detract from the gameplay because it's quite simple and it's quite quick to work with sounds a like a little bit like fan fantasy materia perhaps it could be perhaps they've taken a little bit of inspiration mm -hmm. yeah sounds interesting that so do you start with the tokens or do you gain the tokens as you go along you find them as you go along and there's there's an awful lot of exploration to do in there but it, it's nice exploration because of the art style and right. because of the music and just the general again the the ambience of being in the areas and stuff it, it really does kind of tie everything nicely together sounds interesting is it is it generally been released to good reviews i mean if it's come out on the switch a year after i'm assuming that that was a decent investment for the developer they were expecting to sell yeah the the I mean, everything I've seen about it, review-wise, is just you know really highly rated. It, mm. it's it, it's done very well for itself, and I completely agree with a lot of the reviews. It, there's a lot on offer there, and it's it, it's not an expensive game either. I, I believe it's about sixteen pounds on the Switch. So yeah. even with the Switch tax, it's it's still not not that expensive. I've been I've had I've had my kind of. The, it's been in my peripheral vision for a while because I've got so many 2D platformers that I haven't. I still haven't played PID for God's sake, which is 
ancient now and it looks really really cool i just <laughs> never got around to it and there's a ton of others as well um but it's just one of them things that's probably not going to get bought because it's so many others like it but i don't know that that materia thing makes it sound quite materia style thing anyway just makes it sound quite interesting it's the sort of game where you can kind of pick it up and just get lost in it for a little while which i'm sure you can appreciate with how much you play stardew valley uh, well i've just been playing it just now <laughs> just before the podcast and oh, pretty much every other game i get i get lost in um said to my wife last night or the night before i'll be down in an hour and it was about that was about six o'clock and it was half ten i went downstairs <laughs> she's a bit of a game widow unfortunately but i said i left her with um death road to canada so it's all good <clears throat> that's worked out okay good right so sam was going to talk about uh sekiro shadows die twice um i haven't seen too much about it but from what i have seen it looks like it's up there on I, I think it appeals to me more than the other Soulsborne games it feels a little bit more my style I yeah kind of like the idea of I like the idea of his supernatural powers with his his mad crazy hand and sword play in general a game that like like the witcher i know it's nothing like the witcher in terms of the game but the the actual gameplay of that and the fighting i really enjoyed even though it was very much clicking and not really having to worry too much about things about yeah. the stances and everything but there's a lot more in that in Sekiro. apparently you can you can set stances and um there's a million different ways to approach a particular uh, every single different enemy and that that appeals to me that the variation of combat uh, from what i've seen and it looks beautiful as well it is a very good looking game and one thing i can always say about fromsoft games is the combat is going to be spot on or as best if you like that style of combat that you know very punishing but rewarding combat yeah perfect for you but it's the thing that kind of appeals to me with it is it's got the it's got a level of verticality that you don't really have in a lot of the Soulsborne games, you know, you, you you have the grappling hook attachment, so you can kind of, you are like a ninja, you can whiz around the levels, you can get to vantage points, you can escape from danger with it. And that's, yeah. that, that's something that you really don't have with, you know, Bloodborne or Dark Souls. I quite, I mean, I haven't played Bloodborne yet, as is on my list, I've got it downstairs, but I... Uh... I, I also like that element as well. I, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of like the Dishonored and Deus Ex series, and there's ver a lot of ver verticality in those games as well. And it it does add an extra element. A lot of the time, you'll walk into a room in a in a particular game. Um, what was I playing recently? Prey. Prey's got the same kind of element to it at the verticality. You'll do the whole. You'll clear the room out. You'll do what you need to do in the room, and then you'll look up and be like, "Oh, there's a lot of pipes up there. I could have stealthed into the room on." You know, you don't think about it a lot of the time, just because of the way we play first-person games. But it reminds me a little bit of Tenchu, um, the way yeah. that you attack people. At least initially, I don't think it'll play like that at all because that was just very simple in in terms of its combat. Um, but yeah, it's on my list. I'm, I'm I noticed. I put it on my Steam. Uh, list today because i noticed it's on pc as well as ps4 so i think i'll probably go for it on pc still 50 quid though still 50 I'm not, quid I'm, i am quite surprised i mean how long has it been out now um was it about a year no no, no march Mar march. Came out in march so no it's, it's doing well to hold its price but it's it's definitely one that i am going to look to get in the future mm. um I was going to buy it on the launch, but I think I got distracted with something else. But it, it's, I think it's going to be a little bit of a departure. Like if you're used to how the games are a lot of the time, like the, the Soulsborne games, I think it's going to take a little getting used to to kind of get the faster gameplay and, and the stealth as well, because stealth isn't something that I've ever felt has really kind of come into Dark Souls. You know, you can run past enemies, but that's about it. You know, right. they, they still notice you, they still follow you. The idea is you just run past them. It's not about, you know, being on a rooftop stalking your prey. It's, it's a different it's a different beast, really. So I know I know Sam, the re reason you probably want to talk about it is he's a massive fan of all of the Soulsborne games. He's also a massive fan of Tenchu. He's, he's been, you know, he's been a PlayStation owner since, you know, since the original PlayStation days. And he's 
always enjoyed that punishing combat. And I know, I know, and he would come back and say he'd say that it was uh, it was rewarding, like you just did, but also you know what you've done wrong. Yeah, when you've when you've died, which you will die over and over again. I think that's what the catchphrase is, isn't it? For from software games, you will die. You um, died. Yeah, um, but uh, you know the fact that you know what you've done wrong and you can approach it and you can do it again. If you if you you can make a mistake with your button presses and be punished for it and every single fight that you have as well in that game it looks like it's it's even the the simple enemies can wipe you out if you're not careful you have to consider every single fight and it's not even you know i imagine again i don't know if this is the case but i imagine you get to a point where you've leveled up so far or oh you don't do you not have leveling in this game you just have um skill trees i think as well it's as far as i'm aware it's just a skill tree yeah so you'll unlock new abilities so the sit the enemies will be just as hard as they originally you know they were the first time you played them but you've got different ways to to attack them so yeah i think i'm going to get it i've, I've probably talked myself into it a little bit saying it out loud but the last couple it, of days i had a look at a few things and i thought that looks really up my street that it's definitely something I'm going to look at. I, I think the thing with games like that is they're, they're kind of an exercise in patience as well. They, they teach you to be patient while playing a game. Mm. Like the, the number of times I died playing a Dark Souls game because I thought, oh, there's that much that much health left. If I can just get one more hit on, and then I go for that greedy hit, and I am immediately punished and killed for it. It teaches you to just be patient, and you will succeed. Yeah. Dodging, parrying. You know, making sure that you're doing the right moves before you wait for that opening, and and that's what that's that's in, that's quite. It's again, that's that is kind of how the Witcher plays out, especially on the harder modes. It's you have to be patient before you can make a, an attack. I'm not again, I'm not trying to necessarily compare it to a From Software type combat system, but I remember when I did play it, I thoroughly enjoyed that that to and fro with the enemies, and you can if you're patient enough take down enemies at a much higher levels than you you'll be chipping away at the health but you come back to the same enemies later on in the game and they'll be dead easy because you'll have all of the upgrades and and skills and stuff and i don't think it's like that in the the from souls games the from no, souls that, souls bomb that that is one thing they do really well is they avoid the power creep a lot of the time that you get i mean you you do still you, you can still kill enemies quicker and things like that but it, there's like a cap on it so you know, the first enemy you meet in the game could potentially still kill you if you really mess it up. And that's the nice thing with it. it it's it's punishing, but rewarding at the same time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, on my list, on my list. My game this week is Frostpunk, which has been out for a little bit now. I think it was 2018 it came out. It was uh, done by 11-Bit Studios, the same people who did This War of Mine. Have you heard of that one, This War of Mine? I've heard of both of them, actually, yeah. Okay, so this war of mine was a a war simulator, but you were a, a you were a you were a citizen caught in the crossfire, basically, and you were in a house, and you well, you've more than one citizen. You managed a house of people, and you'd have people turning up at your door, and you'd have to make really hard decisions on whether you should turn them away or you should go out and fight that night you know go out and scrounge that night to for food and you have to manage all the resources and the heat and then the weather kicks in and yeah it's too cold and you know and you have to you have to spend resources on building a bed so people aren't tired the day after it's really quite a kind of micromanagey but it it's a social commentary at the same time um frostpunk is their newest game they've done a few others and they've also published a few other games um I haven't played any of their published games, but I've played quite a lot of this war of mine. Um, but Frostpunk is is pretty much this war of mine kind of built into an RTS kind of thing. So okay. the premise is Frostpunk is you, it's like Victorian England. Um, the, the world has been hit by global warming of some description. Doesn't really specify what it is. It's the same in this war of mine. They don't specify what the war is or where you are. They just kind of make, let you make your own mind up and yeah, pause. it's unne it's unnecessary to the story. Yeah, the point the point is you're here. I think that when I play a game like Frostpunk that explicitly mentions England, Britain, UK, and London, I immediately go into my um, 
indie developer head, which was there was grants that were um, that were provided by the UK government uh, to give to U indie studios if their game was about England. My game that I was designing was about England, and it was focused around a particular area of England because of not because of that, but I think you know it helps promote the country, and you know games are massive. Anyway, Frostpunk is this. Um, you set you set off uh, from from England. You go north, and then the game starts. You find a generator. Doesn't really tell you why you find this generator or who set it up, but it's there in the middle of this crater. Um, and then your the the world is very very cold. The storms everywhere all the time. You have to build your city out. You have to build accommodation for people. You have to build infirmaries to cure the sick you have to build scout parties to send them out to get resources you have to you've got cer a certain limited amount of resources within the crater as well frozen trees for wood coal um steel that kind of thing it it i thought it was going to be a full-on kind of real-time strategy game um not, not not with combat but i thought it was going to be real-time kind of sim management but it was more about the commentary on the world there's it's a finite game as well. The default game mode doesn't last forever. Uh, you have a certain time, at certain times each day, you have schedules that all your citizens in this city are kind of set to. And then um, certain days, the temperature will drop. So certain buildings will get really, really cold and it'll reduce productivity in the buildings. It's, a, it's really micromanaged and it's all based around the weather. Um, and you can upgrade your buildings, you can get make them warmer, you can build heaters, you can expand your area where the generator kind of heats, you can uh, you can increase the generator output, but this costs more coal, um, and you have to do more. And it's a very fine-tuned, fine balance about what... I mean, you basically choose between people dying all the time or, or um or them living based on almost everything that goes on you start off with like 80 people i think and that dwindles very very quickly because you don't really know what you're doing at the beginning but then it very quickly you realize right i need to really micromanage or i need to turn this heater off when it's not happening i need to uh, when it's not too cold when it gets too cold and none of the heaters are doing anything everything gets turned off just let people freeze because I'm wasting coal because it's not helping them anyway. There are certain things you learn about the, the actual game, but there's lots of events that occur as well. So the citizens will riot occasionally, but there'll be an event that will pop up very much like in uh, this war of mine that says, this person uh, has decided to do this and this has caused dissent. You, you have a hope and a, oh, there's a hope and a despair meter. It's not despair, it's something else. Um, descent or something like that uh, and you have to keep the hope meter up and the descent meter down and you do that by choosing choosing whether or not you want to go down like the faith and loyalty route which is like religion which I didn't choose um, or the order and like punishment route which I did choose I don't normally do that I usually go for the better of the the, the good of the two options I'm, I'm a if, if there is one if there is one but I'm also quite uh don't want to get too far into political beliefs and stuff, but I'm not a fan of religion in general. So the the fact that they posed it like religion, I, I thought, no, I'm quite opposed to that. So let's go the other way. So yeah, and then you only get a certain amount of skill tree, a certain method of skill tree that you can go down. I didn't choose some of the options. Again, it's, it's a real fine balance about what you do. Everything changes everything in the game. I managed to complete it the first time through. I didn't think I was going to because the temperature dropped from to like 150 minus 150 degrees Celsius by the end of the game. Uh, it's it's quite it, the music as well is like crazy tense because of the stuff that's going on and you can fast forward the game you know like a, a general sim of some description but it is it's like a survival game and they tout it as a society survival game. It's the very first society survival game apparently. Yeah. That's interesting. There's, there's been a, a couple of those come up recently. Like, um, what was that? There was another indie one. Uh, was it Rimworld that was kind of similar? Yeah, like, well, not, Rimworld not... is actually based on Dwarf Fortress. Um, and that's a... Have you heard of Dwarf Fortress? Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, ASCII art kind of extremely complicated simulation game. Rimworld is a, a, a much more accessible version of that and I've played it to death hundreds of hours I've put into RimWorld loads of mods as well to automate loads of stuff but that's just a heavy management sim really micromanaging again about that but a lot more 
a lot more detailed than than Frostpunk. Frostpunk's a lot more accessible, I think. Um, okay. But it wouldn't be for everybody because of the message that they're trying to send with it. I've got a feat, well, by the two games that they've published that I've played, I can tell that that studio is very concerned about particular you know, issues um, around yeah. that. They want to raise awareness, probably. I mean, that's my assumption based on the published games. But yeah, I, I would recommend it to anyone who likes management sim games. If you don't mind being preached at a little bit, kind of in the background, it doesn't do it in your face, but you know, you can tell what they're trying to get at. I'd, I'd definitely go for it. For I mean, I, I understand them using the platform that they have to kind of push an agenda, which I, I, I'm okay with as long, long as it's not nothing too in your face and it's nothing too kind of out there. You know, like if, if the idea is that they're saying, that, oh, you know, well, this is what's going to happen if global warming continues, fine. I, I don't really mind that. But if it's like, you know, you must do this, you must recycle. Arr. No, there's nothing like that at all. It's there's no it's all about make your own it's the same as this war of mine, you know, it's all about make your own conclusions from this. This is what we think, this is our take on the, a potential future. Um and it's done really well and it's a fun game, which is the the key thing. I really enjoyed playing it. And there's a couple of other scenarios as well, um, that I'm gonna play. There's one called the Refugees. I imagine that at one point in the main game, tons of people start appearing at your city and it's like, yeah, I can't feed all these people. I've not planned for this. And you don't plan for anything that happens, especially the first playthrough. I don't know how if it's random or not, but I don't know if it's procedurally generated, but it's it's pretty, there's constantly things going on that, that you're like, there's, at one point the, uh, a group of people decide to turn on you and then they start that there's a scenario in the main game where they start building like a a, a rebellion and you have to try and get that the numbers down on that rebellion before and luckily i did well on it but it could easily have went the other way if i didn't make certain choices at certain times in the game uh, it's good very choice driven very choice driven yeah sounds good i enjoyed it okay right so let's move on to games we're looking forward to matt what have you got in your sites in my sites this week is risk of rain 2 which is currently available in early access but i'm i like to let things kind of stew a little bit in early access although i have been told that it is very very playable right now so oh, have you not played it, it i've not played uh, risk of rain 2 i've played the first one um i did go through a bit of a period of playing roguelike games i, I don't know why i think it's the kind of you can shoot through them in half an hour and it either live or die by it yeah i think i think that's the nice thing with it but anyway so um it's available on pc and it entered early access on the 28th of march 2019 by hopu hoopoo hopu. Hopu. i'm gonna say hopu but i'm hopu. always wrong with the way i say things hopu games so basically it's a third person shooter roguelike with a heavy emphasis on multiplayer and co-op the idea being that, like a lot of other roguelikes, you fight your way through a stage against enemies, you pick up a resource, in this case, kind of cash, um, you get to the end, there's a boss, you defeat the boss, you advance to the next level. The fun thing about it is there's so many different items that affect your playstyle that no two playthroughs are ever going to be the same. It's all procedurally generated in the first place, so every level is going to be different. You can't speedrun it, you can't chart your way through it. It just offers a lot of replayability, and that's something that I don't get a lot with games. Like I, I'll, a lot of stuff, I'll play through once, so or I won't even finish, and I'll think, "Well, I'm, I'm not going back to that." But then, something that I can play for half an hour, like uh, going back to things like Binding of Isaac, I, I don't know how many runs I've done in that game. I've just done run after run after run because it's it's so quick and it's so it's so different each time even though it's the same set of rules that are defining everything about it it still feels different and it's still challenging but it's still rewarding and that's the nice thing with it so what i really want to do is get it with a few other people and play the multiplayer because the, the multiplayer it, it's good in so much as obviously multiplayer is going to make it more fun because you're playing with your friends but at the same time it also forces you to choose a bit more about what items you pick up there's only eight i believe eight pickups per level or everyone ninja loot you yeah oh exactly somebody could just run through and pick up every pickup and then you're left with nothing it, it's one pickup it's whoever gets it gets it so, so uh, full disclosure i've got it and i've played it a fair amount 
um, played it with a friend, in fact, um, previous okay. host on this show a few weeks back. I don't know why. We just both noticed we both had it, and I can't remember where I got it from. I didn't get it on an... I must have got it free. I don't know. It must have came as part because of the pack that I've got with Risk of Rain or something. Um, I, I, think, I, I, I think when it first came out, actually, if you bought a copy of it, you got a free copy to send to a friend. So it, could somebody have sent it to you? Possibly? He might have sent me a friend. Uh, he might have sent me a, a copy. That might be it. Here's uh, a friend. <laughs> in fact, he did. He, now you said that, he absolutely did. He sent me the copy. Anyway, we played yeah. it for a little bit. He's played it a little bit more than me. I didn't really know what the hell was going on when I first got into it, but very quickly figured out exactly what you described. It's cash-based. You've got a shared pool of cash, which is... Uh, when I when I play with, with Stee, <laughs> the guy I played with, we're both notorious ninja looters, but I'm only a ninja looter when I play with him because I know he is one he's one and and we both try and do everything we, anyway we eventually got to a understanding that we need to be a bit more careful because we were just dying two rounds in um we need to be we need to talk to each other about the upgrades that we're getting um i didn't get much out of it i gotta be honest i don't know if it's because it's an early access or it's just maybe not my kind of roguelike um i found it a little bit samey a little bit monotonous uh, there wasn't enough variation I like the ideas in it. I, I, it was literally just holding down left click for the entire match, yeah, and not much more. You know, moving around, avoiding enemies, collecting different upgrades. But that was really it. There was not the the combat wasn't interesting enough for me to keep me engaged. And the, the, a lot of the time, I play with friends who who don't mind that. You know, I said I've, I've said Killing Floor before. And a lot of my friends play that kind of game. It gets really monotonous and boring to me. I need more variation, more, more intrigue in a game, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to burst your bubble. No, um, no. If you want to play it, I'm up for having a go of it with you, though. No, definitely. I mean, the thing for me is, I understand what you're saying that the gameplay does get repetitive and a bit same with, with those sort of games. But the real fun in those sort of games for me is breaking them. Like, uh, again, Binding of Isaac as an example. If you pick up the right combination of items, you can literally walk into every room and you will just have a floating circle in the middle that it, it's just like a Tesla coil. You walk into the room and it just zaps every enemy and kills them. And essentially, you just won the game at that point. You're just walking to the end. And that, that for me, like seeing how far you can push a game, that's the fun. I, I love seeing just how fucked it gets <laughs> yeah I, I can see that um and i can see that in that game to be fair because of the random procedural generate generated uh aspect of the power-ups some we did quite a few run-throughs we didn't just give it five minutes we played a fair few hours um some of the run-throughs it was just after a couple of rounds it was impossible for us to get anywhere because we just didn't get the right pickups but other times it's like oh i've got this missile that's firing every five bullets or something and it's it's not you know completely destroying the, the big enemies and it was great but you know if you didn't get that it made it very very difficult to to, to progress yeah to progress and i'm not sure i like that maybe that's just a balancing thing maybe that's why it's still in early access maybe. i mean it's it is kind of a, a frequent thing with roguelikes isn't it you know you it, some items feel like they may, they might have like one use like in one situation but a lot of the time it feels almost like it's kind of the developer kind of going like ah, i got you you can't get anything better now i ah, enjoy that and that i like it a little bit it's that kind of like all right well you know if you're gonna do that to me i'm still gonna beat you again it, it, it yeah. kind of ri riles me up in a good way yeah but i think you can look at it another way and go if if you if you approach the game without any power-ups in Risk of Rain, for example, you would not be able to complete it. You have to have the power-ups to be able to get anywhere. So that, I mean, if you could complete it without the power-ups, then surely having any power would make it too would make it too easy. So that again, it's a balancing act, and it's making it right. It's, it's we go back to my favourite type of roguelikes, like the FTLs of the world, and you know, like even that Death Road to Canada. It's the same thing every time we play. It's the same mechanic. And some of the run-throughs, I've completed it once, by the way, in the last week, finally got to the end. <laughs> um, but it's a rogue light because we get additional power-ups and skills and traits that you can then apply to your characters and kind of use them. But it's still very, very random, you know? Yeah. Um, the ending to it, by the way, is brilliant. Comedy gold. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, the, the, it's it's one of them things that it has to strike a fine balance. Some of the playthroughs of FTL that I've done have been punishing, and then some of them you get right to the end and you just about get it. You just about kill the ship at the very end. And the first time I did that, first time I got, what do you mean I have to do it again and again and again? And but that's the punishing aspect of it. There's there's punishing. There's difficult. And then there's random number generator annoyance, you know. And as long as you're enjoying the gameplay, even if the random number generator gets in the way, I don't mind a roguelite. Rogue Legacy, another brilliant example of a f fantastic, extremely difficult roguelite game. And, you know, have you played that? I have not. Oh, it's brilliant. The bosses in that game are insane. You have to get exactly the right build, exactly the right... Get it, it's next to nothing you love platformers um i can't recommend a roguelite h higher than uh than rogue legacy get on it awesome i'll check it out okay moving on unless you've got anything else to say about risk raid 2 no no i'm just looking forward to playing it good stuff right so i am looking forward to a game i've mentioned a few times god of war this is the reimagining um on the ps4 I it's my next game. I'm going to complete um, what we're playing at the moment on on uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Finally, I've gone back to that, and I'm, I'm getting making some progress. And I'm going to go on to God of War. Have you played it? I haven't, but it is on my list to play. Right, you haven't got it though. You haven't got like it's not no, sat there no. ready to go. No, um, I'm I'm looking forward to it for a number of things. I played the original God of Wars and didn't get on with them that much. The hack and slash, you know, you got lots of upgrade options and stuff. I've, I think I played all three of them. I didn't play three all the way through. Um, I got the HD remasters, and that's when I played them. Um, played the originals, Sam's originals, actually. I guess that was supposed to be on today. His, he used to live with me, and uh, he, 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 I borrowed his. And, yeah, didn't do much for me. But what I like about this is that it's got the hack and slash, and it's also got the RPG elements. Um, which I'm looking forward to, and I, it just—I'm really interested to see this this camera thing that they keep going on about. This—it's one shot all the way through the game. They never, they never switch shot. They never cut. Um, all the way, you know, into all of the cut scenes. It sounds like it's easy, but it's it's a feat in itself just doing that. Um, so you've got the camera behind Kratos. It's the, it's the over the shoulder camera, isn't it? But when it goes into when it goes into um, like the cinematics, it just takes you know it kicks away from his shot, does a shot, it does never never cuts, never changes angle or anything, and then goes back to him. Apparently, um, I don't know how true that is. I'm sure there'll be some cuts. It seems mad that that wouldn't be the case, but uh, that that just that one thing I want to play it for really. But also the RPG element and the, the change. I'm not sure how the little kid following you is going to work yet. From what I've heard, it works pretty well. Like he yeah. doesn't really get in the way as a follower or anything like that. I, I don't think it's like you've got to go up to him and press X to revive him every five oh. minutes. I, I think he basically kind of keeps to himself. From what I understand, he's just kind of there. And any bonus damage he does, it's like great, nice one. Apparently, uh, Kratos is a is a bit of a, a, sh a rubbish father to him as well, or something. He's he's very harsh with him. I, I don't think he actually knows his son's name. All I've ever heard him call him is <laughs> boy. <laughs> Right. Well, I said I don't know much more about it. I can't really. Not going to witter on about it. But I'm. It is my next thing. I probably will report back in a few weeks. Hopefully, when I get get chance to to get on it. I'd, I'd like to have an update because, as I say, it's something I'd like to play myself. The the combat looks satisfying, and it's it's kind of got that feel of like a superhero movie where you know it's like they don't get injured in the cutscenes. They just get angrier. Like no, nothing ever like happens in a cutscene. It's just people get madder and madder, and it drops you in at the most exciting part of the battle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the the boss battles in the original God of Wars was kind of what sold them. Um, the 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 bits in between, the hack and slash bits in between, were almost arbitrary when it when it went to the actual boss battles. They were all different, and they were all quite um, there were set pieces. You know, there were there were big yeah. parts of the game. Um, and they're all I mean, you know they all had their own way of approaching approaching each enemy too there's nothing wrong with that having a game that's you know kind of stringing set piece to set piece as long as the set pieces are good i mean look at games like shadow of the colossus that's basically set piece to set piece with there's nothing in between there's nothing yeah. in between literally 
But it, yeah, that, I mean, that was that was a game I really enjoyed. I felt sad every time, every time I took one of them down. Though, I think they meant just, to make you sad, though. I, I think that's it. They're just they're not doing anything. They're minding their own business. It, it'd be like you know watching an old woman get mugged in the car park outside of Lidl. It's like, well, what's she done? Well, I'm not Apart sure. From... I feel sad about that. I'd, I'd probably intervene. I'd be angry more than anything. But this, anyway, sorry, you, semantics. You, you'd be <laughs> you'd be wearing the balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> Not outside Aldi, mate. It's Marks and Sparks for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rob them, rob someone who's actually got money. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, right. We're not. We're, let's not talk about um, the third one, which is the out of world, out of world. Um, we've talked about that previously. Anyway, I don't know if we've got any new perspectives on it. Not much at the moment. There has. There's been little bits and pieces come out about it, but nothing. I, it. I'm, I am keen for it, and I think it comes out. Um, October time, so I'm, I I am keen to talk about it once it comes out. But for the moment, I'm I'm kind of sequestering myself away from it a bit. I just want to kind of go into it when it comes out. I watched um, I watched a review from a fairly well known uh, YouTube review channel um, that I watch quite regularly, and they they were they were doing a preview, sorry, not a review, and they were spaffing over it. They were basically saying it's Obsidian at the best. It's it's um, it's like new what New Vegas should have been. You know that old phrase of the last game that this developer was well known for. It's what it should have been. It's New Vegas two in space. Yeah, New Vegas is um, spiritual successor, etc. But it looks interesting. It looks like my kind of thing, and I'm I'm hankering for another Skyrim slash Fallout Bethesda type game. You know that yeah. big deep exploration you know huge world that's got lots of random events and lots of different way lot of different things to sidetrack me you know so i never play the main mission you know that that's the kind of game i like so i mean uh, that that's the judge of a game like that if you can go like if you can sit down to play it for a few hours and never once touch the main mission then they're on to a winner because they they know how to keep you entertained and you, that's what i'm really hoping for with this you say that but I mean, I've played hundreds and hundreds of hours of Fallout Four. I love, I love it. But it got such bad reviews, and a lot of people really disliked it. And I'm, I'm not sure why, personally. For me, it was because I, I, I enjoyed it up to a point, but it was a case of it got, it got to the stage where there was again power creep and like nothing was a challenge. But also the, the RPG elements were too light to really keep me entertained I, I didn't really enjoy the perk system i didn't really enjoy leveling up and things like that and it and the like talking to npcs to me was just it took so much of the you know it, fair enough it's only like a list of items you can go through but having all those options to discuss with like an npc it made it feel like you had a lot more to kind of do with the world whereas it basically boiled down to yes no sassy answer fight me and yeah. uh, it just gets so predictable with that. I, I want I want to kind of get some exposition from talking to people in this world. Yes, but I suppose uh, I yeah, I think I I mean I've pr totally exhausted the side quests in that game, and I kind of got onto the main mission. I don't care enough about his son to keep going. You know, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure it was quite an interesting main mission, but I just never I played enough of it, and I got to a point with like the Minuteman quests where they. They were just repeating themselves, and I couldn't tell if they were repeating themselves or I was actually making progress in that in that mission loop. Uh, yeah. I couldn't tell if that's what I'd saw. So, yeah, I think I kind of got bored of that. And plus, you started getting attacks on your uh, settlements, and it's like, well, is it is it an arbitrary thing? Shall I just leave them to defend themselves? Shall I just set a lot of turrets up and? You know, because I mean, I, I, I think I've got a house in uh, in the main settlement, the first settlement you come to. It's three stories high. It's about twelve by twelve. Um, no, hang on, three by three blocks, four by four blocks. Sorry, and every single square's got a power suit in it, a fully built power suit. I've got so many of them, um, and so many yeah. cores, and you know, I've got so much of everything in that game. It's just, but that's just me. It's, I like I like hoarding. Okay, shall we move on to Hardware Hot Pants? Hardware Hot Pants. We will eventually have some sort of little intro for this. 
which will probably just sound kind of dirty if it's me making it anyway. So this week on Hardware Hot Pants, um, not too much. And basically all we've kind of got to go is a little bit of speculation on a couple of things, but a little interesting things. So the first thing I've noticed this week is there was a patent filed by Microsoft for an Xbox style adapter for smartphones. So how this basically works is if you picture turning your phone on its side and then essentially cutting an Xbox controller in half and clamping it either side of your phone. Oh, so, right, yeah. So if, if you think kind of the same setup as like, like a, a switch, switch. You know, yeah. yeah, the screen's in the middle, you've got the controllers either side. So there's a, been a patent application filed for something like this by Microsoft. There's not really too much else to go on with it, but what the kind of idea of going around is that it might be a streaming platform or it may, might be something to do with sort of in-home streaming for like Xbox users. So we don't have too much to go off at the moment on it, but I think it's an interesting idea and I'm surprised it's taken this long for somebody to do it. Like, you know, any, anybody could have uh, kind of picked that up and done it. Well, it's been done quite a few times. Um, I mean, I don't know if you know, China is absolutely ram-packed full of consoles and add-ons to phones and all kinds of stuff. There's so many clones out there that come and go. It's ridiculous. We, we don't mm. see any of it. You know, you'll see, you'll go down B&Ms or something, you know, like a cheap shop and you'll see a, a rubbish handheld computer, but that's the, the worst we get. They get fully-fledged consoles that are usually Android kind of, uh, Android, you know, Steam boxes type thing, but you can't play any good games on them. They're just three hundred dollars or whatever it is for, for uh, you know, for <laughs> something that's rubbish, absolutely rubbish. So that kind of thing has definitely been done. It's just if Microsoft but, are doing it, then there's going to be some R and D. There's going to be some development in it. Yeah, sorry, I, I should have rephrased that better. What I meant is, it's the first time it's being really done by like a major Western player. Hmm. So that's an so. attachment to existing smartphones. Yeah, it's basically, it's also going to be, it's going to be the two halves that kind of sandwich your phone into a switch kind of configuration. And allegedly it's also going to charge your phone as well, which is like, I imagine a lot of people would sit, hear that and think, well, my phone's just going to run out of battery quickly. So that is something else they're doing with it. They're trying to kind of just give it, give it a bit more viability as something you can actually play with. And I, I do like the I've, I've always liked the idea of using a smartphone as a console, even even with simple things like emulators, like the Game Boy. But again, the issue has always been power consumption it and was, licensing as well. And licensing, but you know, you you can find a ROM online if you really look hard enough. And we do not advocate ROM uh, downloading ROMs on this podcast, but. Uh... No, I don't advocate. Oh, what I'd say is buy the original game and figure out how to download the ROM so you've just got a copy of your own game on your hard drive. Oh, I mean, that's what I do. That's exactly what I do with all 10,000 of them that I've got. I've got exactly. 10,000 games downstairs. 10,000 games? Mm. Where, when are you going to play them? I've played most of them, obviously. But have you? <laughs> <laughs> now, I've, I've got a lot of games downstairs. Maybe not 10,000, but I have a lot of games downstairs. Uh, and <laughs> on Steam and behind me and everywhere. Basically, my entire house is games. The wallpaper are, D, uh, are DVDs. And... So your house is basically like a giant hard drive just yeah. full of games. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. It's a living, it's a living uh, organic hard drive. Um, <laughs> yeah, it sounds interesting. I'll wait until it comes out. It's like, you know, anything that's new for me any new innovation and i'm saying same with like vr ar um anything that comes out i'm i'll wait to see how it does before i invest i'm nearly there with vr i'm not sure i'm i'm convinced it's it's the thing yet it, it's creeping closer but mm. it's still got some way to go i think we need, need at least another generation before people start taking it a bit more seriously but it's it's at least better than it was in the 90s anyway but yeah so this i'll, yeah. I'll wait i'll wait it out i'll see uh see what it does yeah it, I, I just i think i see the potential but it again it, it's like we were discussing um the other week with stadia like how if it's a streaming service are people going to pick up on it are people going to play it how much is it going to cost there's so many things that come into play with it but then again it could also just be 
hardware that you could use you know you could perhaps you can configure it to just work with other games in which case then it's got some value so we'll wait and see what happens with it maybe it can just be an extended control pad for your with a smart screen on it for your xbox possibly I, that's another possibility i mean you, it does open up the idea of things like for sending chat you know text me- messages through the like the chat feature on xbox it makes mm. it a little easier for that so i think there's a lot that could do with it i'm i'm, I'm interested to see where it goes have you got an Xbox? An Xbox One? Uh, I don't. I picked PS4 this time around, but I, I'll, I'll see what happens with the next generation. Hmm. You know, as we all do, you know, we tend to, as the educated of the gaming gaming world, we tend to uh, wait it out keep, a little bit, figure out, yeah, <laughs> figure out what's... Keep pouting us is that. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I like to think I've got a little bit of expertise in something in this world, and not that it's anything yeah. to shout about being a a lover of games or an expert I'm not an expert, I'm really not an expert of games, I don't know why I said that <laughs> anyway, next next piece of news so the other little thing I had this week is there was an investment meeting this week with AMD where they announced their new plans for the coming year and what they revealed is that they are planning to release some new hardware um, based on the current Navi, uh, Navi architecture which is going up against the top end of NVIDIA's cards, which is something for me personally I am quite interested in because if they can do to NVIDIA what they've done to Intel with dropping you know, dropping the price while giving you incredible performance, I, the, the, basically AMD is the underdog right now that's coming up swinging and it's making a lot of room for itself. The, the, the prices have gone ridiculous in the last few years for, for CPUs and GPUs. So I, anything they can do to try and claw that market back and to give us better, just give us more for his money, I'm totally behind. I'm, I'm really excited to see where they go with this. So when we say NVIDIA killer, I hear this a lot. You know, every, every year we have, oh, this is the new, you know, the new thing that's going to bring him down or it's going to it's going to take over. It's going to be much cheaper and get nearly the amount of performance or better performance sometimes. Um, th- is this going to be taking on RTX? It is. It's going to have ray tracing as part of it, which is, I, I don't, again, with like adoptment, I don't know if that's really something that people are all that interested in at the moment. I mean, I'm sure people do take an interest in it, but like for, for you, I know you have an RTX card. Does, I'm not interested in it, though. I'm yeah. not interested in it whatsoever. That I only got it because I was doing an upgrade. What I'm interested in here is, um, what art, sorry, RTX. The only reason that that is a thing, it's the sorry, it's the same reason that that is a thing that tessellation was a thing years ago. That you know that anti I can't even remember half the terms, but every new technology, graphics technology that comes out, the graphics card providers focus on that and sell it, and it's marketing. And yes, it yeah. makes our games look better in the long run, and RTX will make our games look better in the long run. But it's not really a reason for me to to buy a new CPU. I buy because it's not running modern games. Yeah, no, exactly. I, if somebody had the option of like, okay, you want to buy a new graphics card, here's the 2080 Ti RTX or here's the 2080 Ti. It doesn't have RTX, but it's got more cores in it and it'll run slightly faster. I would take that one every day of the week because I just, I've seen what it does and I don't really care enough about ray tracing. Like, I, I not enough support not, for it yet either. Exactly. It's like I've, I've seen some like sample images, and it's like, oh look, this fire reflects in a car door. It's great. However, uh, the PS Five is coming out with our, with ray tracing. That might be different then. If, if that's encouraging people to start developing more for it, then again, we could see the market change of it. But mm. like you say, it, it's marketing. It, it's it's driven by people going, oh, that'd be cool to have. And well, that, that's. Ray tracing has been a thing for forever. Um, it's been a thing in the uh, the the movie world forever. We've had pre-rendered scenes, and now we get into a point where we're not. We haven't got full true ray tracing in graphics, but we're getting we we're getting enough for it to run in a real time environment, and we're getting powerful enough GPUs to to run 
half ray tracing or whatever it is. I, I don't I don't know the technical ins and outs. I just know that it's not true ray tracing that it's still you know they use in a, in a movie. But some of the yeah. things that you can see, the realism that that ray tracing light gives you. I can definitely see it as an advantage for games in the future, but half of the games I play are 8-bit indie games. Most of the games I play are, are low-resolution, low-poly games that use more CPU than anything else. Yeah. I, I, prob I mean, Prey, you know, playing that in 4K, 60 FPS, beautiful. That's why I've got my RTX. It's not because I wanted the ray tracing. It's because I wanted to get the best possible card for playing 4K games. That's it. But, I, go on. No, sorry, go on if you had a point. No, no, I, I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Well, I've lost my point now. So I well, it's, yeah. I think my, the, the, the thing is, is it's not, it's 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 all marketing, and I am for once in my life an early adopter with this RTX card. I don't normally do that, as I said, with anything. But I was at, I was just at the right time to buy, and I had the cash to get it, and that's why. It's not because I want to be oh look at what I've got over everyone else. I've got a friend who's like that, and he ends up with three new RTX cards in his his water cooled machine, uh, in his full tower, you know, and it's like. Right, fine, go for it. And then he'll throw it away five minutes later because I'll be bored of it. It's weird, it's weird like that. But yeah, um, not me, not me. No, but anyway, it's interesting to see where the market's going. And as I said, anything that AMD wants to do right now, I'm interested in just because I want to see, I want to see the fight again. Uh, you know, if you go back seven, eight years ago when AMD still had competitor cards and had competitor CPUs that were worth having, the market was better people were getting more for the money and it's just it, it's very pro consumer and that's what i want to see yeah i just i just want to see people be able to get the money's worth without having to take out a loan to buy a graphics card it is ridiculous how much they cost i mean i remember a, a high-end graphics card was around 300 400 pounds the last generation that i bought one um and that was a long time back now but now what was it two and a half one and a half grand, two and a half grand for the full end RTXs. I can't remember. Um, I think you can get a twenty eighty Ti for about a thousand pounds. The cheap that's the cheapest I've seen. So it will have been about thirteen hundred when I got mine. And they're about nine hundred, the same equivalent cards now are about nine hundred to a thousand, so it's dropped just by four hundred quid in the last few months, for God's sake. So but, hopefully I mean, that's in comparison AMD's like influence. The the the, the first like big graphics card I ever bought was a GTX 780. Like I, I had graphics cards before, but that's the first time I kind of went all in on a graphics card. Mm. And I think I, I think I paid about three hundred and eighty pounds for it. And now, if I wanted to do the same thing, if I wanted to buy a twenty eighty, it's like seven hundred quid, something like that, six seven hundred quid. And it's just, it, it's not rising in any sort of meaningful way. It's just they're putting the price up because they can. They they probably would argue that there's all this R and D and they're making smaller architecture, you know, nano. What are they on now? Seven nanometer architectures. AMD's on seven nanometer. I think Nvidia is on ten, but don't right. quote. It might be ten or eleven. I don't know, but I'd, either way, they're making it smaller and smaller and smaller, and they're no longer increase, increasing clock speeds. They're just adding more cores to things, aren't they? and that's been that's been the norm for a while now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If, I, I agree with you. Uh, we need we need more competition. It'd be nice if there was another, you know, a third big provider in the world. I don't know if that'll ever happen, or well, people I, will trust them. <laughs> I, I think a few years ago there was there were rumours of um, Intel entering the market, and, and I think they did have a development GPU. And I'm basing this on like a very spotty memory of Linus Tech Tips, so don't quote me on it again. Right. But I, I believe they did have a GPU and they had test units set that they sent out to try out and it, it never really materialized, whether it was just a case of they have, you know, partnerships with NVIDIA and they're saying, look, you know, don't, don't do this. You know, we'd, we'd rather it just be us and you for the different bits or something. But it they, they've got the power to do it and they've got the money to do it. But what do they want to be the third person in this in this kind of market a pig no. in the middle exactly mm. okay right anything else in hardware hot pants 
That's it from me this week. Good stuff. Well, we shall close the show then. We're running over. We're running late. Once again, probably about 10 minutes. Not too bad today. Not bad. too bad this week. It's not, not bad for two of us either. We've no. managed to keep it going, I think. Well, said I'm here. I talk, I talk for bloody Britain. Sorry, I'm sorry about that, but it, it is who I am. You're listening because you like us, probably. I'd, either that or you've got nothing better to do. Maybe you're stuck on a train and you've got no Wi-Fi. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you hate us and you're waiting for us to make a mistake. Anyway, let's uh, let's close the show. <laughs> so, yes, thank you very much for listening, and we do hope to see you next time on Residence Arcade. You can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Residence Arcade. Visit our website, website at resonantarcade.com, where you can find info about the show and links to all our social channels. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade, where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com, where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. And that is it. All that's left to say is goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. See you next week. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. Bye.